Every once in a while, an extraordinary talent appears that moves the boundaries of what is considered possible in basketball. In the past, vast majority of superstars whose popularity spilled over into the mainstream and raised the profile of the sport were men. But over the last couple years, we are witnessing the phenomenon where a skinny white girl with unremarkable physique has grown into one of the most recognizable basketball players in the world. This is the story about Caitlin Clark's ascent to superstardom and all the challenges and opportunities that come with her unprecedented fame. Caitlin Clark is a female basketball player who is primarily playing the point guard position. Born in 2002 in Des Moines, Iowa, she attended the local University of Iowa for four years, finishing her college career as one of the most accomplished players in history. Standing at just six feet tall and weighing 154, she is known as a capable playmaker and a world-class shooter from the three-point line. She is serving as the primary offensive engine of her team, carrying the scoring load and distributing the ball to her teammates with impressive efficiency. Despite her lack of physical power or leaping ability, she strikes fear into her opponents with the ball in her hands or when moving without it, since her speed and elusiveness allow her to get past the defenders and find enough space to launch a shot. The list of her accolades puts her squarely into the rarefied air alongside the biggest legends of American basketball and includes two national championship games, two National Player of the Year awards, all-time NCAA scoring record. Due to her skills, she is sometimes compared to Steph Curry, and it has sometimes been argued that she may be the best shooter ever in the history of female basketball. While she scores a lot whenever she plays, she isn't an empty stats scorer that only cares about the numbers, and she knows how to elevate her team and guide it to victory. Known as a tireless worker and very intense competitor that never shies away from a challenge, she appears to have the so-called it factor that separates great players from merely good ones. In addition to her impressive on-court stature, Caitlin Clark has become a mainstream celebrity of the highest rank and is currently present in the U.S. media on a non-stop basis. Her name has been invoked in so many discussions that have little to do with basketball and caused so many crazy arguments that it's fair to wonder whether all the media circus could negatively impact her career. The unprecedented popularity for a female ballplayer playing in a small Midwestern town had its positive sides too, and Clark managed to become a powerful symbol of growth of women's basketball and a catalyst for a better treatment of other athletes. At the very least, she has entered the basketball world with a bang, and even the casual fans are completely fascinated with her story and all the possible twists and turns that are still awaiting in the future. Caitlin Clark is now a person with instant name recognition across America and abroad, and she has a chance to prove her greatness beyond any doubt and control the narrative around not just her, but also her sport. The noise surrounding the most hyped female basketball superstar in the social media era has grown much louder as the time came for her transition from the comfortable environment of college basketball to the fishbowl that is the WNBA. The professional league may not be too financially strong, but it certainly occupies a prominent spot in the media space, and the arrival of Caitlin Clark was an event that caused massive speculation much ahead of her actual debut. Clark was selected with the top pick in the 2024 draft, joining the struggling Indiana Fever franchise and instantly making her new team more popular in its hometown and America at large. Adding to the intrigue, Clark's arch rival during her NCAA days, Angel Reese, was selected with the third pick and immediately became a viable contender for the coveted Rookie of the Year award. The incoming rookie class headlines by Clark and Reese comes at just the right time to energize the league, which has been steadily gaining in quality, but still lacks the publicity necessary for sustainable success. Strangely, Caitlin Clark had to make a financial sacrifice in order to join the most prestigious female basketball league in the United States. After collecting seven-figure NIL compensation while at Iowa, she agreed to sign a standard WNBA rookie contract that pays her just a bit over $80,000 per season. She could have conceivably made much more by staying in college for another year, playing for an overseas team, or accepting the shocking $5 million offer from the Big Three professional league. Her decision to chase basketball glory over the richest payday illustrates her competitive nature and a healthy relationship towards the game. On the flip side, on Indiana Fever, she was guaranteed the starting point guard spot and got a chance to play alongside the last year's number one draft pick, Aaliyah Boston. All elements are in place for her to start adding to her legend and potentially earn a much bigger paycheck in the future.
The rookie season was the first opportunity to see Caitlin Clark matched up against the best women's basketball players in the country and possibly the world. And so far, the results have been a mixed bag, but the trend is positive. After a relatively slow start by her standards, she found her rhythm and became a legitimate top-tier player in the WNBA. Despite her inexperience with the pro game, Clark is putting up pretty good numbers in general, and we already know that much of her game translates naturally to the elite level. There are still some negatives. She still struggles with consistency, and in certain games, she has looked a bit bothered by tough physical defense. Her 17.1 points per game are best on her team and good for 14th in the league, while she currently tops the WNBA with 8.2 assists per game. Individual success hasn't yet fully translated to winning, although the fever is certainly improved compared to last year and is currently fighting a tough battle to make the playoffs for the first time since 2016. The year hasn't been free of controversy. Clark has been on the wrong end of hard fouls as well as head-scratching quotes by fellow WNBA players, while media coverage has been all over the place. In fact, we are hearing her name so frequently that it's easy to forget that she is just a rookie. Obviously, her viral fame and broad social impact are largely overshadowing her play on the court, which is not exactly fair and could lead to inaccurate understanding of her skills and qualities. That's why it makes sense to take a step back and look at the roots of this phenomenon in order to understand why Caitlyn's career is so important for the entire realm of women's sports. It's easy to say that Caitlyn Clark is a media darling who generates interest based on factors other than her basketball skills. Several public figures have already suggested that the main drivers of her popularity are her race and sexual preference. She has been compared to Larry Bird and called the Great White Hope, but in today's day and age, these tropes sound tired and outdated. The fact that Clark is openly heterosexual, as opposed to a large portion of the WNBA player population, has also been cited as the reason why the media can't stop talking about her, even if there is no real evidence to support this position. In other words, Caitlin Clark's high media visibility turned her into an abstract image that everyone can interpret in a way that aligns with their own worldview. However, there is one measurable effect that her presence on the scene has caused. Her popularity has significantly raised the level of interest for female basketball, with her team being the primary beneficiaries. Practically all of her games are sold out in advance, TV viewership is up for the WNBA as a whole, and the league has finally approved that its teams can use chartered flights after Clark and her teammates were mobbed by a crowd of fans when they attempted to fly commercial. The amount of time talking heads at ESPN and other major sports networks dedicated to women's basketball is rapidly increasing, and some of the attention is also directed towards other deserving players. The increased focus of fans and media on the women's game and the corresponding uptick in revenues due to the nation's infatuation with Caitlin Clark has sparked a social trend that is sometimes described as the Caitlin Clark effect, and it has undeniably been good for the growth of this amazing sport. She is helping great basketball players to get noticed and inspiring an entire generation of young girls to believe in their talent and practice hard in order to reach the top. However, this is a huge burden to carry for a 22-year-old woman who is still trying to become a complete basketball player and has many hurdles to clear before she can match some of the luminaries that came before her. The following quote by Clark clearly shows that she is aware of the media frenzy and that it makes it harder for her to focus on the mundane tasks of training and preparing for the games. You know, you're still aware of it and you still see it. Other than that, like, my focus is basketball. It's it, Sometimes it stinks how much the conversation is outside of basketball and not the product on the floor and the amazing players that are on the floor and how good they are and how great this season has been for women's basketball. Caitlin Clark is accepting the fact that she is more than just a basketball player and that some of the consequences of the media's obsession with her are adding real value to the sport. She never asked to become a social media phenomenon, nor did she intentionally contribute to the broader effect that is named after her. On the other hand, she knows that women's basketball needs a lift and is unselfishly embracing her role as the ambassador of the WNBA in the mainstream. However, to fully understand the magnitude of her impact, we have to consider just how troubled the league is in terms of finances and public perception, despite the quality of individual players and teams. Make no mistake, the U.S. women's basketball team is a powerhouse on the global stage. USA has won eight straight Olympic gold medals and 10 out of the last 11, which basically means the women are even more dominant internationally than men's teams featuring top NBA stars. 
Despite this incredible level of success, WNBA players born in the USA typically have to play in Europe during the off-season if they want to make any serious money. There was a lot of talk lately about the pay gap between NBA and WNBA players, with the former group making millions already as rookies, while even the most established female stars play for a relative pittance deep into their careers. There are objective reasons such as attendance and TV rights that determine the level of pay, and WNBA never had sufficiently marketable stars to motivate the casual fan to watch the games on a regular basis. Some of the retired stars are recognizing that Caitlin Clark could be the driver that finally draws attention to excellent play of the entire generation of talented ballers that are currently leading WNBA teams. One of the most decorated players from the previous era is Sue Bird, who won at literally every level. Her collection of trophies includes two college titles, four WNBA championships, five EuroLeague wins, four World Cup victories, and five Olympic gold medals. That makes her ideally qualified to comment on Clark and the winds of change that she is bringing, and Bird had nothing but the highest praise for her younger colleague and the role she has in popularizing the sport. She's obviously doing amazing. Her game speaks for itself. I think women's basketball, women's sports really, but women's basketball has been on the rise. And it's kind of like what Magic and Bird was to men's basketball, like this moment, we, we kind of needed something. Like yeah, and Caitlin's that moment. The truth is that Caitlin Clark is not uplifting the sport by herself. As both Bird and Clark said, the quality of play has been improving steadily for a number of years, but nobody noticed. Caitlin Clark made people pay attention, and once they did, they realized they are watching elite basketball that doesn't really fit into the old stereotypes. Modern women's basketball is fast and exciting, the players are getting more athletic and supremely skilled, and the games are very competitive. All the game needed was a little bit of buzz, and Caitlin was in the right place at the right time to provide it. The impact might very well be permanent. Once the masses became aware of the WNBA's quality, they might continue to follow even if Caitlin Clark lost her current public standing. With more robust revenues and more involvement from big corporate sponsors, the league will now have enough resources to improve its marketing efforts and a better chance to convince the NBA to invest in its long-term development. However, there is a price to pay for all the good things that Caitlin Clark has made possible. Since no good deed goes unpunished, she became a convenient target for critics of all shapes and colors. It's enough to mention her name in a controversial context and millions of clicks are sure to follow, so it's not really a surprise that many people are consciously trying to benefit from this. The criticism has often been vicious and totally uncalled for, especially because Clark never asked to be on all the front pages, and by all accounts, she is a grounded person that never forgets to give props to other great players. Perhaps the most unfair has been her treatment by older WNBA players. During her first season, she was targeted both on the court and out of it. She has been fouled mercilessly and afterwards accused of being too soft for professional basketball, while her racial and cultural background was used to discredit her accomplishments. Such incidents have been mostly recognized as a result of jealousy and misguided desire to compete, but they still have a bitter taste and needlessly put additional weight on the shoulders of a young woman who is still learning how to cope with all the negativity. It's equally puzzling that some of the biggest voices in sports media are carelessly using her name to advance their own agendas. The list of media personalities that insulted Clark, intentionally or not, is long and includes famous analysts such as Stephen A. Smith and Doris Burke. However, perhaps the biggest head-scratcher came from the former NFL player, now a successful TV anchor Pat McAfee. His comments were so insensitive that he was forced to backtrack and issue a public apology. After about 15 minutes of doing a new game show called Guess Which WNBA Rookie Here, I utilized the words white bitch to describe Caitlin Clark as being the superstar. Now, when I was saying it, I legitimately meant it in a complimentary fashion, like this is the one. As I said it, didn't even think, honestly had no idea what was happening on the internet until two and a half hours later. And I started reading through a lot of comments that were being said, and I felt like actually the worst human on earth. How in the world could he think it's okay to use such an expression is difficult to fathom, but it's emblematic of the type of creative license that commentators are taking when discussing Caitlin Clark. In this case, the remark was obviously offensive and the backlash was swift and severe, but many journalists of the day are getting away with stuff that hurts just as much, even if it isn't worded in such a horrible manner. In the era of nonstop coverage, it's common for superstars to be pilloried for their dubious moves. Just ask LeBron or Tiger Woods, but what Caitlyn is facing is way worse. 
as she is drawing vitriol even when she is doing everything right and trying to stay firmly focused on basketball. So we need to ask a central question. How good is Caitlin Clark without all the hype? Is she really that special talent that will change the way her sport is played like Steph Curry did in the men's game? Or is she just one of the many contenders for the status of the top women's player that might not even have the best career out of players in her own draft class? The answer is not so simple, but at this point, we have a growing body of evidence that the optimistic view is more likely to be true. Let's elaborate on that thought a little bit. Based on her four years at Iowa and all the amazing things she did in college competition, it's safe to say that Caitlin Clark is a legendary college player. You don't win two Naismith Awards in a row by accident, and she didn't have a star-studded team to prop her up either. She fully deserved to be picked first overall in the WNBA draft, even in a class that is considered historically strong. Although her level of dominance is somewhat diminished as a pro, she is still having a stellar rookie campaign by any objective measure and is already among the league's best players. We still haven't seen how she would manage to navigate the rigors of WNBA playoffs, so it's too early to declare her a winner at every level. But she always shone the brightest when the stakes were high, and we have no reason to doubt her killer instinct. Is she already the best women's player in history? She certainly is not even the best player in the WNBA right now, and she was recently left off the USA squad that competed in the Paris 2024 Olympics. While this decision was contentious, it would be hard to say which of the players on the roster should have been dropped to make room for Clark. There are numerous hurdles left to clear before we can really compare Caitlin Clark to someone like Lisa Leslie, Sue Bird, Cheryl Swoops, or Maya Moore, who have the hardware to back up the status of a legend, but there is plenty of time for the young phenom to match their championship count and justify the lofty projections. On the other hand, Injuries or bad team situations could prevent Clark from fulfilling her potential, so some patience is in order before we award her the crown. Given the amount of media coverage, it's very easy to forget that Caitlin Clark is just 22 years old and may still be several seasons away from reaching her prime years. That's the scary part. If she continues to develop at a similar pace we've seen so far, she could turn into a force that bends defenses to her will, no matter the level of opposition. True fans should be aware of this, and temper their expectations of immediate superstardom, at least for a year or two while she adjusts to life in the pros, and learns how to leverage her unique advantages to help her team win consistently. Likewise, her harshest critics should abstain from dragging Clark into every random discussion, even if that reduces the amount of attention their content will get. In other words, everyone needs to chill out and let the girl find her footing in the WNBA before jumping to any conclusions. Sadly, this is not going to happen. Caitlin Clark has an army of fans that will only grow with time, while the number of haters is growing exponentially as well. For better or for worse, she will be held to a higher standard than her peers, and no matter how many amazing things she does, people will always be asking for more. That kind of pressure would crush almost anyone, but Caitlin Clark has already demonstrated she was built differently. If anyone can withstand all the chatter, stay calm and continue swishing threes from impossible angles, it's her. It will be fascinating to watch her career unfold, regardless of whether her on-court value ever matches the mythical status that she already has in the media and on the internet.